and a very warm welcome. You're joining us at Hyde Park on Adha Dharana 24. Tonight on the show, we'll talk about Sri Lanka's tea industry, how Sri Lanka's tea industry could capture uh, new or even uh, uh, expand existing markets, export market. Uh, I've invited to our studios, Chairman of the Sri Lanka Tea Board, Mr. Jayampati Moldivar. A very warm welcome to you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me for your program at Hyde Park with Hindi very. Oh, sure, nice. thank you very much indeed. It's it's uh, it's a pleasure to have you here, Mr. Mollikoda. You have about forty years of experience from financial um, uh, management uh, in at the executive uh, level to res human resource development, strategic planning, international marketing of tea and plantation management. With all this experience that you bring to the tea board, what are your future plans? Well. The future plans are, as you know, the Sri Lankan tea industry uh, generates about 1.3 billion US dollar export revenue. Uh, there's hardly any import content, unlike in the case of other export-oriented industries. So it is a net, more or less, uh, net foreign exchange. But I would call it as a uh, linking with the global value chain, you need to look at the entire supply chain. So it is not just export-oriented uh, a growth strategy we are talking about. It's a way of life for our producers. So stemming from the exporters right up to the farmers. So we have about 475,000 farming communities. Mm -hmm. We call it as um, uh, small <coughs> holders, small holders. And we have about 700 odd uh, tea factories processing the green leaf supplied by these farmers. Then. Parallelly, we have about 20 regional plantation companies. So it's a way of life for these uh, supply chain players. So we need to balance the act uh, with all the stakeholders. So our way forward strategy, uh, not that we came out with a new strategy. Uh, this industry is, um, is basically 95% private sector driven. So we have, in addition to Sri Lanka Tea Board set up in, in under under Government Parliament Act of 1975, we have this Colombo Tea Traders Association (CTTA). Mm -hmm. It's the a, a private sector apex body. Right. You have the Tea Exporters Association, you have the Planters Association, 150 year old associations, Sri Lanka Tea Factory Owners Association, then the the producers and the and the farmers. All are there in the, so they sit at my board also at the tea board as ex officials. Mm -hmm. So they came out with what is known as uh, tea industry, the Ceylon Tea uh, Roadmap 2030. Mm -hmm. So we uh, facilitated that and the government also came out with uh, tea strategy. So our, the way forward strategies, you know, serving the niche market. I'll come to that later, mm -hmm. why it's niche market globally, and the, the quality. The total quality management takes precedence to everything. Uh, not that no volume is not, uh, uh, not a concern, but it's a concern. But apart from the volume of tea that we produce and export, we need to focus constantly on improving the quality parameters as perceived by the uh, discerning consumers. consumers. Um, you talk about the volume. Sri Lanka is a small uh, country with, with limited resources in terms of um, how far we can go in, uh, in expanding our production. Uh, at the same time, we've been talking about value addition to target, uh, uh, instead of new markets, to capture new consumers or, or a, a higher, a, a, a different level of uh, consumers. In order to do this, do we still have the infrastructure in place? Because we see that it's only a handful, a very limited number of Ceylon tea um, exporters who have gained that international recognition, brand name recognition. Um, what are the challenges here? Yeah, uh, I, I must, uh, at the very outset, I must uh, uh, explain uh, to answer your question the how many exporters in this country exporting Ceylon tea. There's a misconception that we have uh, one or two brands. Mm -hmm. We should be proud of our brands. There are about uh, eight, ten uh, exporters, uh, brands. And also we go for uh, highly sophisticated markets in addition to catering to this uh, Middle East and Russia and Ukraine. And now the latest uh, 
uh, trendies, um, the China. Mm -hmm. So Japan, Germany, all are highly sophisticated markets. So we cater to these discerning tea consumers with these uh, three pillars, namely the sustainability, demonstrating the sustainability credentials. And also it's an it's a authentic product. And also the wellness factor of the Ceylon tea. And we specialized in black tea segment. Mm -hmm. Although tea, you call it around, you said our production is very limited. Yes, no, we are stagnating around 300 million. Uh, ideally, we should be aiming at 340 million, not very much higher also, because in, in global market scenario, the price consciousness is also there. So we avoid the competition because Kenya is producing something in the region of 590 million kilos per annum when we produce 300 million. Mm -hmm. So the India domestic market is there, but they also can export large quantities. So we avoid competition by serving in the global mass market and we go to the niche market. So on these three pillars only, we th those are the, the, the critical success factors. But uh, regardless of uh, this, this comparison, we, do, we have been talking about improving our value addition. In order to capture this, the, the discerning market, the clientele that you're uh, very rightly talking about here. Uh, but again, regardless of the number of um, tea producers and brands that we have, uh, we, we, we realize that there is only a limited number of brands that have gained that household name uh, recognition internationally. So how, 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 how do we look to meet yeah, this gap? Quite apart from the own brands registered in Sri Lanka, the Sri Lankan tea, the Ceylon tea caters to the uh, private labels also. So there's nothing wrong in developing pri private labels because building a brand is a, is a very costly affair. We are, we are competing with multinationals. So the private labels also, our one of our strategies to promote Ceylon tea going into those private labels also. If you look at uh, Russia, the Russia, we have this um, Orami trade, the Princess Nuri. Uh, they prefer Ceylon tea. So we, in our marketing strategy, we have a room for development of that. So, but we give priority to the Lion logo, it's a symbol of quality, 100% packed in Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So some of the private labels are coming to Sri Lanka and packed in Sri Lanka, although that label or the brand is not owned by a Sri Lankan. But, but the tea is produced in tea Sri Lanka. Tea is produced and 100% packed in Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. As you know, uh, we don't encourage um, the exporters to import more and more uh, tea uh, for re-exports. But, but we've been in recent times talking about re-exports and also in the past about the failure of re-exports due to uh, quality standards being breached or um, uh, substandard uh, exports being brought into the country, imported into the country and re-exported under the Ceylon tea brand. So is there some sort of regulation yes. now? Yeah, that's, that's again, it's a misconception. Mm -hmm. uh, in 1981, since 1981, for the last 41 years, we have been, imp uh, we have been importing tea to the tune of about seven to eight million kilos out of 290 million teas exported. So it's a very small amount. Why we allow, only specialty teas are allowed to be imported. So at that time, as, as I said, uh, the globally 40% of the orthodox black tea market is there. So we, we, we cater to that. But when the exporters get orders from discerning consumers or the importers from that ten they give what is known as assortments. They want little bit of, you know, the Chinese uh, or Japanese senchai green tea, so we, which we don't have. So when orders come to the exporters saying that we need 90%, 95% Ceylon tea, this way, green tea, black tea, the high grown, mid grown and all, they ask some teas, you know, little Darjeeling tea and all. So we allow that. Otherwise, we'll miss the entire the order. Mm -hmm. So that is the number one criteria for allowing little bit of then coming back to this uh, so-called inferiority no the unfortunately when kenya produces 580 million kilos their top soil is superb our top soil is gone over a period of 110 150 years so they can produce tea at a lower price and they produce what is known as ctc as opposed to orthodox mm -hmm. ideally suited for tea bags so when orders come and when they say I want some teas, CTC teas from Sri Lanka, 
Sri Lanka also produces some 25 million to 26 million kilos annually CTC. So, but you have the different uh, flavor profiles for orthodox and we need different palate. So, they, we, they need something like uh, something similar to Kenyan. So, that we allow. The price factor is also there. Then they are in a better position to compete. Mm -hmm. So, then they get a better price for their uh, the black tea, Ceylon tea. So, that is the, the marketing strategy that the exporters adopt. This also brings us to the question of replantation. Um, this is, this is uh, we, we, we are actually reaping uh, the benefits of tea and, and these plants that have been uh, planted a century or more ago. Uh, what's the strategy on replantation? Is that possible? How do we mitigate the challenges and, and, and the, the loss of revenue as, as a result of uh, the period during replantation? Yes, I would uh, call it as replanting and infilling programs as opposed to just mere replanting. Two things. One is the replanting cost of bringing one hectare into bearing for new replanting is is costly. Mm -hmm. You don't get the real return on investment. And most of these plantations might not be able to afford it. No, they have been doing it uh, roughly around 1% of the replanting. Ideally, on the basis of economic lifespan of 30 years, 33 years, you need to do 3%. Mm -hmm. But the other side of the coin is this, the, the so-called old, uh, old seedling teas, the quality wise, it's very good. Right. So we, when we were at the plantations, we did some experiments and TRI also did. So when you have a mix of ortho, the, the VP teas, new teas and the orthodox, the seedlings, you get a better quality. The aroma, flavor, uh, flavor profiles are very, very, you know, appealing to the consumers. So that is why you need some kind of orthodox uh, seedling tea also for orthodox uh, okay. uh, tea manufacture. Okay. So, but having said that, the production has been declining partly due to uh, our you know, stakeholders not undertaking replanting. That is true. So, tea board, we have this uh, tea promotion and marketing levy money collected, we started uh, accelerating this nursery, quality nursery programs and also the infilling program. Mm -hmm. So if you go to small holders, 73 percent of the production comes from tea small holders. Mm -hmm. So even their VPs, there are block infilling can be done and they have started doing that. Mm -hmm. So rather than uprooting the old seedling teas, the, the strategy is mainly focusing on replanting, the infilling, together with replanting. So when the teas, uh, when the tea fields are not giving adequate returns, say for instance in terms of uh, yield per hectare, productivity say less than 800 kilos per year, very low, then you allow uh, the plantation companies, allow uh, the management, allow the planters to uh, uproot the tea and start replanting. Okay. But more importantly, the vacant patches, when you see, you would have seen, you know, over one acre uh, vacant patches, you know, you remove one small, uh, you know, the, the tea bush or one or two, and then you go for uh, infilling. It's more or less mini replanting. So, so this replanting, uh, again, it's a misconception that we don't undertake replanting. We undertake, now we have accelerated the, the, the infilling and the replanting, but to do that you need quality nurseries. Mm -hmm. So the starting point is nurseries, if you don't have nurseries. So for nurseries you need the mother bushes, mm -hmm. cuttings. Are we, are we, are we uh, managing this well? Is this on course? Yes. What is, what is the progress of the replantation? Very good pro uh, progress uh, during the last uh, one and a half, two years. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, about 50 million uh, plants coming out from the nurseries this year. Uh, how much of uh, this this uh, levy accumulated in the fund has been pumped into the industry itself? Anyway, the government uh, collects cess um, mm -hmm. from the exporters at that point of exports and they also provide uh, subsidies for replanting through the Ministry of Plantation. Apart from that, we realize that the, this money belongs to the stakeholders, not only for export um, uh, promotion, so we, we provide money, roughly we allocate about 600 million uh, rupees for this type of uh, developmental activities for the first time because there was this uh, 
perception that this tea promotion levy of uh, 3 rupees and 50, now we reduce it to 3 rupees, should be spent only on global tea promotion campaign. But thanks to the CTTA and the exporters, they allowed, they realized the importance, as you correctly said, they realized the importance of having the correct quantity and the correct quality of the teas. Mm -hmm. So they, they also permitted and uh, tea board uh, uh, board of directors have granted permission uh, and uh, we, going, uh, we are going ahead with that. Right, I think it's time we take a short commercial break here at Hyde Park. We're in conversation with Mr. Jayampati Mulligoda, Chairman of the Sri Lanka Tea Board, uh, to talk about Sri Lanka's tea industry and Ceylon tea exports. back we're in conversation with the, the chairman of Sri Lanka Tea Board. Uh, Mr. Mulligoda, um, we've, we've had some challenges uh, uh, when we talk about pesticides and uh, also pests in managing uh, that area. Uh, we've the very famous capra beetle, we spoke about that. Uh, how, how, how is the regulation aspect of uh, ensuring standards of Sri Lanka tea exports? Th that's at a present? very, very pertinent question. Uh, on the one hand, we need to control pests and diseases and on the weed management also. Uh, so, uh, good old days, they used to adopt different uh, methods and after that, uh, we have been using, uh, along with the chemical fertilizer that is required to get the much needed nitrogen and the NPK, the potassium and the phosphorus. But at the same time, we uh, the industry started using the glyphosate and diron and that type of things also. But um, quite apart from the, the positive sides of using this to control weeds and other things with a more cost effective manner, the designing consumers world over are concerned about the, the pesticides residues in the tea. I'm not saying just because you apply glyphosate or diron or something like that, you will get uh, the teas get contaminated. But there had been unfortunately complaints coming from sophisticated markets like Japan, the Germany, uh, mid even Middle East. Mm -hmm. Even um, we export about 20, 30 million kilos, you know, to Turkey and all, there had been complaints. That is why we were compelled to put in place a comprehensive the quality management system and regulatory mechanism to arrest the situation. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. Uh, there had been some uh, complaints coming from Japan and subsequently Turkey and all, uh, detection of diron. Mm -hmm. Now, even not only these two, what is known as this anti-cuning and all, so, and the MCPA, the famous MCPA detection in 2017 by Japan uh, actually had declined the, the market share. Mm -hmm. but they are very particular. They are residue level, maximum, what is known as MRL, maximum residue level is 0 0.01 milligrams per kilo. So that shows it's a near default. Mm -hmm. So the moment you apply, so we... So where are we now? Now we ban totally the MCPA with the support of the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. uh, but then when it comes to the, the, the other one, the glyphosate, uh, in another two, three years time, uh, the globally they are trying to ban glyphosate. But glyphosate we allowed in 2018, there had been some discriminatory policies adopted by the authorities from time to time, not because of anything else, because of the pressure coming from the, from the, the, the consumers. But then in 2017 or 18, they allowed limited quantity to be applied for a period of three years. Now that lifting of the ban is now is no more there. Mm -hmm. So now basically the glyphosate is not a permitted uh, uh, chemical. Right. Uh, but having said that, at that time the then minister wanted TRI to come up with what is known as the organic uh, uh, the, the, the pesticides. So. The recently, we had uh, discussions at the tripartite uh, meeting. The TRI has confirmed that they have come up with some uh, only thing, the cost factor. So cost is little high. Mm -hmm. So it's a cost-benefit analysis when the global demand says that minimum uh, usage of uh, pesticides, minimum usage of 
chemicals, you're compelled to adopt uh, what is known as, uh, I would call it as a hybrid model. So on the one hand, you, have, you don't have labor to do that also. So take, for instance, a weeding. So when it comes to dyron, uh, the we, we don't allow, because anyway, TRI, uh, having done research, uh, allowed earlier only non-plucking fields. So the moment you apply dyron, uh, it gets contaminated, and then the rejections. Uh, is this is this the, the, the question of pesticide residue now addressed? Addressed. 100% in uh, Sri Lanka. I we don't have any complaints. No, there had been. Now, what we do is, as you know, uh, our teas, we produce about 22 million to 25 million kilos that is sent through the auctions. So we have about 11,500 to 12,000 lots per week. Mm. So we draw on ran, uh, randomized representative sampling technique, we get about 4,000 to 4,200 uh, the invoices lots per week to the tea board uh, independent laboratory. Before we send these things to the laboratory, uh, there is this tasting panel, again drawn from the private sector, representatives from tea exporters, the planters association and all. And they go through the 4,000. And there had been detections. I must say, detections are minimal. Mm -hmm. uh, not even one percent, one uh, and a half percent. It's not only the, 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 the pesticides. Even the other uh, elements like uh, you can't have excessive uh, sugar. You can't add under the Control Act of 1957. You're not supposed to add anything. That's, That's the beauty good. of it. That's, That's good. good. <laughs> That's good. So, so, but having said that, there are some violations, mm -hmm. but those things get arrested through this mechanism right. and then we have this regulatory mechanism we go to the factories so there had been some you know detections and then we take and, and we suspend the factories not that we like to do that compelled to suspend and uh, as we talk there are about uh, five six factories suspended for uh, four months and then second time if they violate uh, license will get cancelled you have to have that type of stringent uh, precautionary measures to arrest the situation because uh, nowadays the discerning consumers don't want especially with the EU market and, yeah, and uh, the it Japanese market even as you said Middle East even is Middle East there and the silicious matters the sand that mm -hmm. has become an issue because when you have a very high price teas like you call it TPTs mm -hmm. and when you have little bit of sand and all the Iranian market and they, they don't like. Uh, well, what other particular measures are taken in terms of ensuring standards so we do not erode the the, the, the privilege and the, the exceptional brand quality that we have uh, achieved over the years for Ceylon tea? The structure is in place. Actually, it's not just a regulatory mechanism. It's a self-imposing structure. We don't allow export below ISO 3720. Mm -hmm. So in some of the other countries, uh, sometimes uh, they don't they don't have this uh, stringent quality measure. So the minimum quality standard for Sri Lanka is 3720 ISO. So that gives the, the residues and all. So uh, And also, the structure is such that the teas are catalogued at the auction by the brokers. So there are eight brokers. They are well versed with the with the quality standards and they are the the, the first line of defense to go through the, the stringent quality parameters and return the teas back to the estate. There had been instances every week you get some teas uh, like the crude fiber. It's it's no fault of the users. Sometimes you get this crude fiber percentage, 16.5 under ISO 3720. The minimum standard is 16.5. You can't have more than 16.5 crude fiber. Then it will get rejected. If they don't uh, arrest the situation, sometimes uh, then the tea board, uh, the independent panel detects that, and then we advise the estates to uh, uh, reblay uh, the the reuse it. But if it is exceeding 22, 24 and all, we don't allow. Mm -hmm. So that will get denatured. Mm -hmm. So that type of stringent policies and the, and the quality uh, assurance systems are in place, but still there can be little violations. Uh, you mentioned that we are average uh, production is about th 340 million. Uh, 300 million. 300 million. Per and you expect to improve it, improve. Or, or the expectation um, is likely to 340. Now, India has and Kenya have seen a uh, steady, a steady rise in production improvement. Um, we've sp spoke about the challenges we have. We, this is a small produ producer nation, but at the same time, uh, plantations have been grappling with um, uh, the concern of labor drain, and there are other 
um, other challenges that they face. At the same time, exporters uh, are talking about their concerns, but we can talk about the export uh, concerns after this break. But before that, we'll talk about the smallholders as well as plantation. You, 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 you spoke about uh, the, uh, n why it's important to improve productivity of uh, tea. Yeah. <laughs> there are two aspects. One is the production and the other one is the productivity. So what is more important is the productivity because when you have, say, instead of getting 1,300 kilograms of made tea from a one uh, hectare, if you get 1,600, your cost of production per kilo comes down. So that is the key. So the, es the export competitiveness lies with the, with the cost leadership strategy also. But there is a limit. Uh, I must tell you, uh, in 2000, year 2000, we were producing over 304 million kilos. In 2000, another 10 years later, in 2010, we went up to two, 328 million kilos. And then we peaked at uh, 2013, if I remember correct, 338 million kilos. Mm -hmm. So what happened? Since then, there had been a gradual decline in the tea production and the productivity. Ex the extents have not come down. Extents have not come down, but the productivity has come down, partly because, as you said, we have not been able to do replanting, high quality uh, the the uh, the clones and all cultivars. But more importantly, we have not been able to uh, adopt the mitigating strategies for the ill effects of the climate change, and and in that context only we need to relook at this application of chemical fertilizer and all these things because if you uh, TRI has done a study and good news is we are going to declare 2022 and 2023 as a year of soil restoration year. Mm -hmm. So we are talking the name of the game is the soil fertility management mm -hmm. strategy integrated soil fertility management strategy to improve the topsoil you need the, the carbon matter soil organic matter. So the scientists know very well that Quite apart from this NPK, there's a little low emphasis on the NPK, but more importantly, the carbon content, carbon nitrogen ratio is of paramount importance. Um, unfortunately, our tea estates, especially the high growns, the carbon content is less than two. Ideally, I'm not saying the we must go for forest reserves, the carbon content. No, it's about 2.83. So how do you do that? Simple, but it's complex uh, to practice because you need large amount of uh, organic matter. So that is why they adopt what is known as good agricultural practice in Sri Lanka. There is a Sri Lankan standard mm -hmm. like good manufacturing right. practices, GAP. They adopt, uh, you have uh, multiple um, strategies uh, starting from the low shade, the mid shade and the high shade. Then you need the green manure, the, the, the mulching that will improve the topsoil. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, if you go to up country, you can see the, 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 the so topsoil is somewhat gone. But they have been doing that. They have been, I mean, to the credit of uh, regional plantation companies, they are addressing that issue. Uh, no, this is an important step towards environmental sustainability. Absolutely. And uh, this will be recognized by uh, our buyers, is it? Already they have recognized that is why the Ceylon tea is fetching the highest price. Now, a lot of people uh, have not understood uh, the, the cost benefit aspect of that. Although Kenya produces 580 million kilos and we produce 300, the Kenyan auction price is $1.90 per kilo, whereas in our, if you convert into dollars, we get about $3.50. Mm -hmm. Now, the prices have skyrocketed the la last two months. Yes. The, it's good for the, the, the producers and, the, and the, the, the farmers, but we get the highest price. So, but there is a tipping point. The exporters are unable to compete in some of the markets with this high price because Kenya can produce buy tea and their exporters or their marketers can sell at a lower price and still make a profit. That is where this productivity comes into play to bring down the cost of production. Mm -hmm. So at the same time, the, the we, we command a premium price. How come we command a premium price with the tea is tea? One thing is we go to this niche market and demonstrate our sustainability credentials mm -hmm. and, and also this purity. The cleanest tea in the world, the, the brand story has to be reinforced. Mm -hmm. 
So when you have little bit of, you know, sh the sugar, little bit of, you know, the sand and all, then you can't walk the talk. So that is where this we are continue to fetch this premium price with these three strategies. One is the sustainability, wellness factor, because the black tea has this, you know, immune uh, booster characteristics, and uh, rising from that we get the premium prices. We'll discuss more after this short commercial break here at Hyde Park. We are in conversation with the chairman of Tea Board, Mr. Jayampati Mollygodan. Welcome back. We're talking about Ceylon tea. Um, I think, um, Mr. Mollygoda, you, uh, I did promise to talk more on the sustainability question as well as uh, Ceylon tea fetching a premium price for uh, the, its attributes for wellness and uh, other um, characteristics. But at the same time, um, going back to the sustainability um, matter, yes, it, will, it is recognized by uh, the EU market, the, the Middle Eastern um, consumers, as well as uh, other Japanese and Chinese markets. But how sustainable is it going forward here? How are the producers, plantations fitting into this? Yes, the word sustainability is often misused, mm -hmm. as you said. So we have to have a sustainable sustainability credentials to be demonstrated. So when it comes to sustainability, as we all know, there are three pillars. One is the environmental sustainability and the other one is the social well-being. And stemming from these two, we need to get this economic sustainability. If you don't have economic sustainability, the, the you don't get that kind of internally generated funds to uh, undertake sustainability programs. Mm -hmm. Example, compared to other competing countries, the Sri Lankan, I talk about the social well-being of the workers, uh, well looked after, both by the government as well as the, the private sector companies. So uh, uh, when it comes to the, apart from the basic remuneration, they look after uh, their well-being. Mm -hmm. So the social uh, well-being of the workers and also the smallholders, I must mention that, as I told you earlier, about 73% of the, the crop, the tea leaves, come from the smallholders. Mm -hmm. Now, under Tea Control Act of 1957, we regulate and monitor whether these money is filtered down right up to the grower. How do we do that? What is known as reasonable price formula uh, to be strictly enforced. So when a particular factory features a price of say for a month 600 rupees, 68 percent of that 600 rupee is filtered down to the farmers. So they keep only 32 percent. So sometimes this 32 percent one can argue is not enough to uh, for their manufacturing the overheads and other things. But when you manufacture about uh, 100 to 200,000 a month per factory, so you this amount is uh, very big as long as you manage your mm -hmm. the cost. Right. But the beauty of it is that is getting filtered down to the farmers. Now I what saw. What is the cost again uh, per kilo compared to our, our competitors? And uh well, our now as I told you, our uh, three dollar fifty, uh, roughly, uh, our cost is around six hundred to six hundred and twenty five rupees per kilo of meat tea, mm -hmm. depending on the on the on the management uh, style and the practices adopted. But do we have an idea how, how it is against our, our competitors? Competitors' costs are very low, mm. very low. That is the real issue. So we will never be able to bring down the cost to that level. That is why we adopt a uh, different strategy of, you know, uh, uh, differentiated strategy uh, on the quality. But still, we need to keep on bringing down the cost of production. Even the farmers, they are cost of production. Now take for instance the fertilizer. Uh, chemical fertilizer prices have skyrocketed. Mm. So are we going to use 100% chemical fertilizer? No. But are we going to use 100% organic? No, you can't. You don't get that, uh, you know, the nitrogen element then. So that is where, that is why we come up with this balanced nutrient policy to bring down the overall cost of production by improving the the soil fertility and thereby improving the productivity. Uh, do we have tea producers uh, who are willing to and interested in going 100% organic? And 
there are some um, uh, farmers and exporters produce organic tea but here the government there's a uh, there's a confusion government doesn't want the 100% organic tea to be exported so there was a misconception there definitely because in organic uh, globally the organic tea market is around you know 100 and 100 to 150 million uh, 20 million but it's expanding at the rate of uh, uh, compound annual growth rate of about uh, 18%, okay. whereas the other markets are about 3%. But having said that, what we want is uh, improving the soil fertility management part, not, the, not to produce 100% organic tea, mm. but even the non-organic tea, if we have the purity, as I explained, the, the, the credentials you know, for qualify as a Ceylon tea, so that is why I call it as a uh, Ceylon tea needs a drip. Mm -hmm. That is a differentiation of the D and then the remind the good characteristics of Ceylon tea and then you inform, you elaborate and then have a last P that is the, the how do you persuade the discerning consumers to buy that is the selling part. They are doing it uh, um, um, to the level that is required especially by the export. We should be proud of our exporters. They are uh, they are exporting tea to about 140 countries. So our lion logo is the symbol of, that is 100% packed in Sri Lanka, is registered in 130 countries, mm -hmm. the Ceylon lion logo. But uh, Ceylon tea is not registered. That is why we are going for this uh, uh, you know, GI registration to get the Ceylon tea also registered. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there can be infringements. Right. Uh, are the tea exporters uh, um, sufficient uh, are, are they happy with the, with the kind of support that the government extends or uh, do exporters require more representation what are the challenges exporters face right now um, again we talk about we've been talking about the sustainability matter for tea production but how conducive is the economic situation uh, the environment in sri lanka for tea uh, when when we talk about exports this is the key i i fully agree the, there has there has to be a greater representation by the exporter. But um, uh, having said that, the exporters are represented at the tea board. So we act as an intermediary between the government uh, policies and the, and the private sector. The general tendency, the private sector, they'll always, you know, they try to, you know, uh, come up with their own strategies. So as I said, we have this uh, uh, 2030 strategy. Uh, there are a couple of uh, concerns expressed by exporters which I also subscribe uh, and we have made representations to the government. Take for instance, since you asked this question about the macroeconomic fundamentals. Okay. When the rupee, uh, there are so many other aspects also, but um, when the external value of the rupee is overvalued in terms of uh, US dollar, as you know, there's a fixed exchange rate policy for the last uh, five, six uh, months. Uh, there is a valid reason for government to do that because if you if you have a if the rupee depreciates to a level of 300 235 and all what will happen to the the debt portion what will happen to the cost of living all these things have to be taken we 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 take care of that but having said that if you don't have the right price the other the trading partners are their currencies are also getting depreciated take for instance iran take you know the the india of course the depreciation is less our depreciation is little higher but i personally feel that you have to have a uh, slightly uh, you know correct value for the dollar so the dollar is little um, under uh, undervalued in rupee terms so they are obviously then there's a shortage of dollars Obviously, the exporters tend to then, you know, complain and try to delay remitting the money. Mm. Because the under, under the, the central bank rules, you can keep it for six months. For obvious reasons, because especially the brand owners, when they sell tea uh, through the shelf, you know, they have to provide uh, credit. So they can't get money quickly. Even if they get money, if the right price is not there, why should they just convert that at 202 rupees when the when when they feel that they feel that this uh, that we we deserve you know 210 rupees or something like that so that type of things and also the the lack of uh, the containers mm -hmm. you know when when there is a limitation in importation the we need the, the food containers not like uh, so when the containers are getting held up then you find uh, you know you don't have the the containers to pack 
So there is a you know stocks are getting piled up. So we are addressing those things. Uh, actually, government is also helping the, the other day um, when we mentioned about the packing materials. So when when there is a restriction in imports, there's a there's a you know you give priority to some other say pharmaceuticals or something like that. Obviously, uh, sometimes you 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 get uh, you know you don't get the right type uh, right type of you know the packing material at the right time. Mm -hmm. Then you know the, you don't you know then that will affect the smooth functioning of the export operation. Uh, we don't want that to happen. So we always you know have this dialogue and. Quite apart from um, uh, the internal arrangements, the the freight charges have skyrocketed three, so four is times. Uh, is, is there a requirement for a representation with the government or uh, relevant authorities in order to mitigate? No, uh, the representation is always there, either through the ministry or through the tea board, and they themselves. We have regular uh, the meetings with the with the government higher authorities also. So. Recently, we didn't have last two three months, but uh, we had um, discussions and we facilitate. They they go straight away. They they make their representations also. So we have three uh, the the structures to make representations to the government, and government also gives their feedback also. So we didn't have uh, disagreements like that. Uh, other than this, uh, for a short period, we have this. Uh, they wanted the impression that there was a total ban on the chemical fertilizer and and 100% organic. So that right. matter has been sorted out. Uh, finally, where do you see uh, tea exports ending up uh, this year? We've been talking about challenges faced uh, in the export market over the years, uh, especially with the pandemic and also internal matters that we've been working with. But uh, tea revenues have been sustained at an average of uh, 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 1.3 billion dollars uh, slight changes from 2011 to 21 but uh, where do you see tea exports especially ending up at the end of the year and um, in terms of markets too how are we looking at expanding are we looking at new markets or yeah new markets of course as I said the the China is uh, is uh, the emerging market uh, we have lost markets in uh, UK but um, the negative side is actually we inherited uh, the system where the the Ceylon tea, as I said, uh, is a niche market, where the mass market is for CTC teas. Mm -hmm. The teas are, you know, uh, the the exporters are in a better position to source teas and market. So there is this uh, negative side where we have not been able to tap uh, uh, market share. Actually, market share have been coming down because of this, because the people used to get tea in in tea bag form not in packeted form. Mm. So that is why we want to avoid this competition and go for this uh, niche marketing strategy. Uh, so we expect uh, slight improvements. Uh, but on the other hand, if the rupees, uh, in rupee terms also I that matters because that will get trickled down right up to the farmer. Right. In turn, then they will make investments through their internally generated funds to improve the, the, the quality of the tea and demonstrate sustainability credentials. Look at the, the regional plantation companies, if they uh, demonstrate more and more sustainability credentials, and then uh, if we market it properly through our market communication strategies, we have this search engine optimization strategies for Ceylon tea and all that is a nation brand visibility, we may be able to get a, continue to get a higher price. So we command a higher price. So now it's a matter of just sustaining this. I won't say that uh, we can, you know, do miracles. Our exporters are doing um, their best to regain the markets. So that is what is needed right at the moment because of the of the nature of the global uh, beverage market. Right. I think uh, it's time we wrap up tonight's edition of Hyde Park. But thank you very much thank for sharing your thoughts and plans for the tea industry going forward. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. We had with us the chairman of uh, Sri Lanka Tea Board, uh, Ms. Jampati Mulligoda, joining us at Hyde Park tonight to talk about Sri Lanka tea as well as Ceylon tea exports. Uh, we'll see you again next week at the same time with yet another edition of At Hyde Park.